Hi, welcome to Vice Bootcamp, a global name in Cisco collaboration and AWS training. In this video, we're going to talk about the tenant portal provisioning. So we're going to try to understand how Cisco WebEx Contact Center tenant structure is set up and its role. We're going to understand how you can configure multimedia profile, how to organize your contact center in a Teams and site, how to create agent profile and associate that with the user profile. Now, tenant portal is one of the first thing that you will see when you log in. It is a simple menu structure, as you can see from the dashboard, you have provision, you have the information about the companies and your time zones, and of course, all the other structured or access or configurations tab that you might have. Tenant profile is also provide you something called real-time dashboard. This is the entry screen that you most likely will see when you log in for the first time. This is where you can see a real-time chart, snapshot entry point, interval, point, uh, interval entry point, uh, and entry point contact daily volume as well. Now each report can be open in analyzer as well. Now the WebEx contact center management portal gives you the tenant act tenant, uh, gives you the ability to configure the tenant that your administrator provision for your enterprise. Here you can change things like uh, settings, for example, you can configure uh, uh, what you call general settings, provisioning, site related settings. Now you can also get a quick online help if you do need uh, you know, instant access. Now, stuff that you can configure here, time zone, uh, tenant name, if you want to customize that, and settings that are great cannot be changed by the tenant admin, only can be changed by the partner admin. Now, tenant settings, which, for example, cannot be changed, as I said. So if they're grayed out, some of the stuff that you cannot modify by yourself. Now, under the settings of the tenant, you can change things like call settings, trust hold, voice contact settings like recording, pause duration, etc. These are global settings that are applicable to all the tenant. So let's go take a look at what a tenant configuration will look like. So I'm right now on this tenant configuration. If my time zone is correct, as you can see, I, I can click on edit and I can change some settings that, that will go to the settings particular uh, tabs. So here I can say short call threshold. So maybe uh, if a call lasted for 30 seconds or 15 seconds, it can be configured as a short call. And if you have sudden disconnect threshold, 30 seconds, if it disconnect within the 30 seconds, maybe consider as a sudden disconnect threshold. Uh, any default outbound ANI, if it is configured, you will be able to select this, but only if you have the privilege to do so. Now, concurrent voice contact enhancement. This is value that is derived from uh, from the purchase of the agent. So how many per agents you have purchased? In this example, it's been set to 300. Uh, here you got the percentage of additional concurrent voice call that are allowed above your concurrent voice call entitlement. So if you have like a 30 entitlement to make a 30 calls, maybe you will allow you to go a little bit over that. So sometimes what happens is it gives you that privilege so that if you do oversubscribe from time to time, then you don't get penalized because you don't have enough li uh, seat license. So if you have 300 and maybe there are 300 calls coming in and suddenly you say 305 or 310, I mean, Cisco does, so Cisco always gives you a little bit of oversubscription capability. This way, you do not have to worry about those little bit of spike that might happen from time to time. However, if that is a consistent thing, if that keeps changing, uh, happening very frequently, you will have to analyze your logs and then make a decision that do you want to either uh, you know, control how many calls are coming in or maybe uh, purchase more license. All right, so other stuff that you can configure uh, here, timeout, desktop inactivity timeout. If in uh, three minutes there's no activity on the agent desktop, it will log uh, timeout from that perspective. Allow agent thrust hold, uh, pause and uh, resume should be is enabled. And recording pause duration is usually 60 seconds by default, but if you want to change that, you could do that as well. Here, uh, if you click on help, it gives you a quick help about what these topics are. You can go to customer, or you are already in the customer. In the dashboard, here you see this little 
button you can get a specific uh, profile you can customize it you can little click on this little button which will expand the real-time report so that you can have a better view on that otherwise you'll see how many calls coming in in IVR how many calls are waiting in a queue connected number of calls and the kind of available agent as well you can go to different areas of your uh, reporting you got entry point or entry point usually where the call comes in you got the real-time data you got historical data and then you got the agent state data those are state related to the agent itself all right, so these are some of the configuration settings that you can perform in your tenant configuration. Now, when you go back to the dashboard, you basically come back here, then you get the provisioning. Provisioning is where you configure the rest of the configuration throughout your platform. Now, let's talk about the contact center concept. What is basically contact center and what, how does it work from the moment the customer calls to the moment the agent answers the call? First of all, you got the tenant definite. Tenant is an enterprise customer that has a contact center service with one or more site. So usually this is the company that purchased WebEx contact center service from either a partner of Cisco or maybe some cases directly from Cisco. Now, when partner or Cisco basically creates a profile for that particular tenant, think about the landlord. Landlord, you know, have a, a tenant that are coming into their building. So what the tenant, uh, cust what the partner will usually do, designate one of the P individual in that company as a tenant admin. So they will create a username and a password that gives you the admin capability. So if I am a Cisco partner, I could create multiple tenant based on how many customers I have. Each customer is represented by one tenant. And then I will assign a username and password for the tenant as a super admin or uh, tenant level administrator this will give that particular customer all the admin privilege into the control hub now as the call coming in so when someone dials your toll-free number so let's say you dial 1-800-777-0060 you dial the toll-free number the call will come into EC, uh, Cisco contact center uh, platform and it's going to hit something called the entry point so think about the entry point is like a starting of the script. Now, in that entry point is going to go through something called the routing logic, basically the script itself. That script is usually created in your know, based on a business call flow. Every company have a business develop a business team or customer service team who will decide how the call will be answered as it comes through the platform. This is not a decision that you and I as a technical people will usually make unless we're a small company. We can participate with the business team to help them guide the process, but not necessarily is our call. If a, cust if a company's a customer service team basically says, no, when a call comes in, I want the call to go to an agent. I don't want them to hear any audio. Perfectly. That's something that we have to follow. Now, what is routing logic is going to configure? In the routing logic, we're going to think, de define things like time, whether the call is even allowed or not. Some contact centers are nine to five. And what if there's a call coming at 3 a.m. in the morning? It could be a prank call. It could be just a call that customer might have thought that the company is open. Uh, so there is a time restrictions and then the time will then follow what we call is a call flow. Call flow will usually have things like play music, welcome greeting, collect digit, waiting in the queue, uh, choose a menu, all sorts of options. Now at some point, based on your selection or based on a certain criteria, the call will be held, uh, set, transferred to a queue. This is where, for example, call could go to sales queue or support queue. Now, you could have more than one queue. You could have a queue for payroll department. You could have a queue for product engineering. You could have a queue for warehouse. Whatever you can think of, you can make a queue for. Technically, queue is a location where the call will be held. Now, when that call goes into the queue, it will decide how to distribute that call based on the algorithm. You got longest available agent, or you can say uh, shortest, uh, shortest uh, per, per, whoever is going to answer the call the fastest or you can say MED basically more, um, minimum expected delay so there are certain algorithm that exists in the queue that allows you to make a decision how am I going to distribute that call is that call going to go, go to the agent who hasn't received a call for longest period of time 
or am I going to choose an agent based on the shortest distance? So this is, these are the things that Context Center, doesn't matter whether it's Cisco or WebEx, basically does calculation behind the screen. At some point, the agent will become available, or, uh, and if not, the call will remain in the queue until one does or until an agent uh, user takes certain action or even the script takes certain action. Now that call is in the queue, it has to decide where you want to send the call. So it's going to send the calls to a particular site and to a particular team. A team is a collection of agent, where a site could be collection of team. So think about you might have a, a main office in Toronto, Canada, but you have one team that is called pro, uh, responsible for sales. Maybe you have a different team that is responsible for support, but they're both located in the same site, Toronto office. Like that, you could have London, Las Vegas, Dubai, India, you name it. You could have multiple sites with one or more team. In those teams, you will define a series of agents. You could have one, two, ten agents, hundred agents. Each agent will, each team will also most likely will have a supervisor as well. Supervisor who's managing that particular team. Now, in as the call coming in to the agent, We'll look into call handling resources. Call will, agent will be selected based on agent profile, skills profile, and multimedia profile. So these are some of the, uh, what do you call, concept that we need to understand as to what happened from the moment customer call. All right, so being a voice guy, you saw there is a voice call just came in. So uh, creating a team and organizing your site is very important as far as how you route your calls to your agent. Now, obviously it is possible that you, when a call comes in, your routing logic could be routing calls to multiple queues. For example, based on the menu choices, you could send the calls to sales queue and the sales queue will distribute the call to site X. However, in site X, you have one team that is available with two agents. But then when a call comes into the, uh, another queue, which might be pointing to two different team in two different sites. So it is possible that the team can, uh, queue can be pointing calls or sending calls to agent into two different sites because it could, it is, it is possible that you might have an agent who are in the US and if they are overloaded, then you could be, uh, you know, distributing the calls to your branch office in, let's say in Canada or United Kingdom. So it is possible for you to point multiple site or team into queue so that you can distribute a call according to either percentage or it could be based on uh, availability. So team admin, which is the administrator responsible for managing your uh, company's profile. Entry point, initial uh, landing, pay, uh, landing place for your customer calls. In this case, telephone number, uh, the user dial or voice chat or email site represent a location controlled by that particular tenant. So if you have a branch office in UK, you have a branch office in Dubai, and your head office is in Toronto, Canada, you will create two sites at least, or each uh, three sites, one for each location. Obviously team is for the group of agent that with a specific team, team could have uh, agent, more, more than one agent, as well as a supervisor. Queue is where usually the call will be queued by the agent and every contact center queue concept remains the same. This is where the call comes in first, uh, then look for an agent based on availability. If agents are in a ready mode, the call will, the agent will be selected based on certain algorithm and then it can point to that particular agent uh, by transferring the call. One or more numbers can be associated with an entry point as well. So. In tenant hierarchy, for example, you may have a customer uh, who may have three different locations. You could have Chicago location, Manila location, and a Bangalore location. And each location will have a one or more team. You could sales team, support team, maybe you have a team that is designated for VIP customers. And then you have, may, uh, for example, um, a Bangalore office could have the similar op option as well. Then as the call coming in, you, have, you will have a welcome entry point. This is where the call will first land. Uh, you press the sales, which is for sales queue. And then you go to uh, two for billing. And last option could be like, for example, press three for 
VIP services. And based on that, you would then decide if somebody choose sales, you could select to send a cost to Chicago sales team, or you could send it to, let's say, uh, the big expert in, uh, um, in Bangalore. Or you could say if the user is gold customer, because the gold customer can be served by two locations, you got the Bangalore location, Chicago location. So that queue can point to both of these locations and allocate agent based on resource availability. As your contact center grows into bigger big and bigger, you will start to uh, reuse your resource, resource being agent based so that you can maximize your call, uh, uh, call being answered because otherwise you might having a disconnect calls or people are waiting for a long period of time due to lack of resources that you might have. All right, so this is it for the introduction of our tenant profile. The next one, we're going to talk about how to build our Cisco contact center. We're going to look at some of the configurations and how each one of these components work more in details.